2019 Fleet Week. Right now we're on the USS New York, heading into New York City. When you get on land, what's the first thing that you want to go eat? I want to go eat pizza. No! <laughs> You guys are used to me heading into a pizzeria, but today we're gonna go out to sea, jump on a Navy ship, and see what it takes to live the day in the life of a Navy and a Marine chef. I have experience as a line cook and in pizzerias, but I really don't think that that's going to compare to what I'm about to see right now. Um, cooking for over a thousand troops in the middle of the ocean. I mean, I just want to see where the food is kept. <laughs> All this cooking going on, where does the food come from? It comes from our storerooms down below, below decks, around the fourth and fifth decks. Okay. So if you like, follow me and we'll go down there and, and you can have a look at right. where the magic starts. Let's do it. So we're in the second deck now and we're going to keep going down. Wow. There's eight decks here in the ships. You guys are going to build up an appetite going up and down ladders here. All your dry provisions are all laid out right here. So this is almost like the grocery store. You guys from the kitchen order from upstairs, mm -hmm. the order comes down, and then they gather everything up for you, and someone comes and picks it up. Or... Right, you put it in the elevator and shoot it up. We, we want to treat our food service as if it was our restaurant. Right, so almost just like a French brigade system at a restaurant. Yes, sir. And we have the front of the house and the back of the house. Really? Just like you guys do yeah. in the civilian sector. So this is the chill box where all our fresh fruit, vegetables, and dairy products are in. All right. This is what you got all right here. Wow. It's pretty low right now, but... I mean, these guys are getting ready to pull in, so in their estimates, this is pretty low. But just this wall alone is pallets and pallets of fresh eggs. You have sacks of onions, pineapples, melons, just the stuff that every restaurant needs to see get the basic meals cooked. We checked everything out down here, but we got to make it upstairs to eat. Thank you. So we just walked into the galley and right away, I saw something that's really unique and it's these huge tilt skillets. This is equipment to cook for many people. You could make huge batches of sauce, huge batches of rice. You only see these at big restaurants or culinary schools, so pretty cool to see these here and how they use them. These Blodgett ovens are obviously set up with big hotel pans inside of them. Two behind the galley. Okay. Oh, behind, behind. Right behind it. So today, the two main things on the menu is the blackened catfish and the roast beef. Correct. How many roast beef rounds will you cut tonight? Roughly about. 600 pounds. Right. Is it all right if I jump on a slicer? Yeah, that's fine. All right, so we got a slicer on. This piece actually looks delicious. And then, just kind of catch it, right? Throw it right on. This is slicing like butter. It's been cooked perfectly. It's a nice thickness that, you know, you can imagine on your plate with maybe some potatoes and some carrots and peas. It really is a nice piece of meat. Perfect. When you guys go out, how many months are you usually out for at a time? We can range from anywhere from seven months to ten months at a time. Do you love being out there? Are you anxious to get home? Uh, bittersweet. Yeah. It's like a free cruise. You yeah. Know, seeing different places, learning different cultures. Right, right. But you leave your family at home, so that's the bitter part. Uh, big sacrifice. Really yeah. big sacrifice. Yeah. Two pieces for us. Okay. Salute. 
So you're in charge for doing all the catfish tonight? Unfortunately for me, yes, definitely. I am. <laughs> it seems like the catfish is a hot item on the ticket right now. Not so much the roast beef. Because uh -huh. I'm better, low key. <laughs> Can I help you? You want me to yeah, spread some out on there for you? You definitely can. Yeah, these things take so much longer than you expect sometimes. Yeah, definitely. It's not like you can wait for the perfect nah, nah, sear. Nah, 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 <laughs> definitely not. At right. the same time, you kind of want to, though. Amazing. I've never seen anybody cook for this many people. Yeah, the first time I'm doing it, it was like, woo! But you know, as you do it more, it gets easier. Yeah, I bet. How's the grind here? Does it get to you after a while? Like working the 16 hours a day. You just got to find a way to have fun while you're doing it, I would say. You gotta find people that you like to talk to while you're in there playing, you know, playing right, but still make sure you get the food done and done correctly and out on time. Can I please have a little piece of the fish and a little piece of the meat if you do that? Thank you guys, I appreciate it. Wow, chef, did you cook this? <laughs> I can't take credit, but I will say this is really good. This is, wow. uh, the spice on it's delicious. Flavorful, mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. What is the overall mission for this ship? So the overall mission of the class of ship that the New York is, is to carry Marines to where they need to go for the fight. With their gear, with their vehicles that they need, and basically we're the Uber for the Marine Corps. <laughs> Take them where they need, drop them off, and then come back and pick them up wow. once we get the call. Yeah, when I look around the ship, you just see so many young faces, you know, so many young so men and women. The average age of a sailor, Marine, airman, soldier is 18 to 22 years old. So. That's what drives this ship, that's what drives our military. What's next for you after this? After serving 32 years and some change, uh, I think next year is time for me to, to hang it up and yeah. let these young uh, folks uh, take over. And I don't want to stop, but I told myself I, I need to, so that way these guys can, can grow. I mean, even for us in the food industry, it's like I always looked for a mentor. You know, I always looked for someone that I love what they did. I love the way that they navigated through the industry and maybe maybe I can learn something from them. Everyone comes from every different walks of life. They come in and they, it's a big melting pot. We as senior leaders and veterans at this, we tend to help that and help tell them, hey, this is what you need to do. Right, right. I see blue. I see some waves. It's time for me to go to bed. Not exactly the Ritz. I think this is the first triple bunk bed I've ever seen. It's basically like almost 10 o'clock now. We're gonna be up at 1.32 to start prepping breakfast. A ship like this, the kitchen doesn't stop. This is Christ. This is, God, this is like a fucking coffin. Feels like a little bit of a Kill Bill vibe in here, but I think I'm gonna make it out alive. Good night. Morning. It's about two o'clock. I slept pretty shitty, <laughs> but we got a job to do. Now do me a favor and get the hell out so I can wash my face and get dressed. They get things ready early. Good morning, guys. How you going? Good. How are you? Pretty good. 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 I'm here to help. I keep seeing the cooks like crack a little smile, like we're gonna put them on the grill. Like, put me on the grill, let's go. Like I've worked at egg station before. All right, so let's get this party started. We don't got time to waste on testing, so we're just gonna make them. So you get busy over here. You're cooking the egg station. All eggs to order, so whatever anybody wants, you make for them. Pretty much. For medium? Thank you. You're welcome. Man. Get these guys out of my way first. That's it. Scrambled chops I put in the center. Yep. My omelet chops go up top. Okay. Regular eggs, uh -huh. like the chief got. Uh -huh. I'll just leave that spot open and come back to it. Breakfast is coming quick. The boys are out here. They want to eat. I'm going to get a towel. I want to clean up the station a little bit and get them organized. Set up the mise en place and we'll bang out the prep and breakfast much easier. Watch out real quick. Yeah, yeah, my fault. We need a towel, we need a garbage. Uh, I asked you already about the towels. Um, let me see. Do you know where I could find some fresh towels? I can tell that they're a hot commodity around here. Oh, you got one, you're the man, thank you. This is very important in the kitchen. 
Every cook needs his fresh towel. Did you guys order already? Scramble with cheese? Two scramble with cheese. And for scrambled is one ladle, one scoop? Yes. There you go, sir. Enjoy your meal. Okay, two scrambled eggs. Enjoy your meal. Omelet, sausage, and onion? Three, what'd you? He said omelet, omelet, tomato omelet no onion. And this was uh, this no, was a different no. order, right? No, no, no. Omelet, no onion, no cheese. Oh, so that means everything. Everything, but no onions and no cheese. Gotcha, okay. That one fell apart a little bit. All right, and then we have another omelet with everything. Okay. Enjoy. Yeah, Thank you. Good for right now, but once we get a rush, he's gonna have to keep the grill real organized. That's why I teach all my Marines to do it a certain way, because once we get a rush, it's, it's a rush. Enjoy. All right. Can I get some? Four over medium, sir. These are the ones you don't want to screw up. <laughs> At first, I was a little overwhelmed. I wasn't really feeling the mise en place set up. But now, I see the vision. You don't have much to work with. You gotta work with what you got. You know, you don't have extra tables, you don't have extra refrigeration, you don't have extra gear. There we go. Enjoy that. Perfect, thank have you. Not day. too shabby. Not too shabby, I'm Not trying. Shabby. Egg station at any job is intense. But here, it's especially intense. You know, you're serving the people that you work with, and you want to make sure that they're fed well and, and in a timely manner. This man right here takes his job very serious and he's very good at it. Yeah, thank you. Props to you, my man. You're getting it done and you're teaching a lot of young guys how to do it and how to carry on tradition, so that's great. We're getting ready for lunch. Just got finished on the egg station. Here in the kitchen, it's nonstop. I'm with Corporal Briggs here. We're about to do... Italian style big beans. <laughs> Italian <laughs> style big beans. I don't have this recipe in my grandmother's recipe book, but I might learn something new today. So first we got the onions and the bacon. Okay. We're gonna saute these. You wanna spin it, to mix it? Cool. Sure, why not? You know, this is interesting. This is like paddle that you use for like big stocks and big pieces of equipment, like steam kettles like this. They don't even have the aluminum ones here. Yeah, these are like the steel ones. These are heavy, this will give you a workout. We're gonna add ketchup, mustard, yep. syrup to give it a uh, sweetness. You know, it's coming together. It's uh, it's coming together. It's looking interesting. It's looking good. Corporal Briggs is doing a great job of cooking it. We got uh, definitely a mix of some stuff that I normally wouldn't throw together in a bean dish. But we're on a ship. We have to feed a lot of people. And this is what we have. What matters is getting these guys fed and keeping their morale up, keeping them happy. Italian baked beans make them happy. Why not? So every day is a set meal. Yep. Tuesdays, Taco Tuesdays. Right now, Burger Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the burgers are right here. All right. Man, so how we typically do it is we just load them all up on the grill. Uh-huh. Throw the cheese on top of it, get the juice going, that way it melts the cheese faster. Yup. As far as like just being out to sea for six months at a time, do you get stir crazy or? You lose your mind low key, but it, <laughs> you know, people on the ship, you talk to them, you hang yeah. out with them, you get to know one another better. Right, It right. makes you feel better. Right. Maybe like a second family. You take a second yeah. family. 18 years old. Yes, sir. Right out of high school onto Fresh the ship. Right out of high school. And what made you make that decision to join the military so young? Travel. Came yeah. from a small town, you know, yeah. just wanted to get out there, see the world. Yeah, so how did you end up in the kitchen and working as a cook? So, all my jobs before the military, while I was in high school, they were all surrounded by the food industry. Yeah. And, I mean, I love cooking. So, yeah. you join the military, they tell you you could be a cook while traveling. That's bonus on bonus right there. <laughs> hey, man. It's all about finding that passion, that thing you love to do, you know? Exactly. If you can get paid for doing it, it's even better. You guys put a little water on there to steam it up so yeah. the cheese melts. Yeah. That's the fun part, right? Yeah. This is my third meal since I've got on this chip. It's been just about 24 hours that I've been on here. You guys have treated me very well. I can't wait to share this burger with my homie. Cheers. Cheers. This ship represents a lot of what 9-11 was and what happened, but also rebuilding after 
the, the tragedy. There's unique steel that was built into the front of the ship from the tragedy. Cuts through all the waves. Just to see the Trainbridge Street Station sign here, it makes you feel at home, especially being a New Yorker. Never forget, absolutely. Right now, we're on the USS New York, heading into New York City. I'm living in Bensonhurst, Bay Ridge, Dyker Heights. Everyone knows Fleet Week because we're right by the water and we're used to seeing these boats come in. What is Fleet Week exactly? Fleet Week is pretty much the Navy going back and explaining to um, everyone in the community exactly what it is that we do. So it's just bridging the gap so people understand what our day-to-day -day is like here on board the ship. Just went under the Verrazano Bridge. To me, it's totally full circle. My father used to bring me down here to the Bell Parkway and then watch the fleet come in. This ship sails all around the world, and right now, it's having its homecoming moment. This is really special. I grew up in New York. I'm on the USS New York. We're heading into New York for its homecoming here. I'm passing the Freedom Tower right now, and this ship is basically a dedication to 9-11 and to never forgetting the memory of 9-11. Be able to see how a ship like this is run from the food point of view, it's unbelievable, you know? It doesn't get much bigger. Working with these guys gives you perspective on your life and how comfortable things are. In a perfect world, I would be serving, you know, fresh asparagus and spinach and hormone-free meat to these guys because they're our military and I believe that they deserve that. It's not an easy job. I saw it with my own eyes. I'm exhausted. You know, being on this boat, just like, it made me think different. It gave me a new level of respect for the guys that are on it. Badass, and I'll be seeing you guys again soon. My best friend is a firefighter, so big shout to Rob. He's up there in Harlem at the zoo. Oh, yeah. oh wow. <laughs> Yo, Rob, that's for you, brother. The Harlem Zoo, they got you.